Friends, COVID pandemic is sweeping our planet in waves. In India, we are witnessing the second wave. This second wave and all subsequent waves will be more infectious. This is due to a fact called virus mutation wherein the virus tries to change its character to fight out the herd immunity we humans get during the previous wave. So effectively, this is the same survival of the fittest strategy which every species has discarded over last million years. What is this second wave? How different this is? How to treat it? And most importantly, how to protect yourself from it? Let's discuss in this video. Hello and welcome. I am a neurosurgeon, not a virologist or an infectious disease specialist, but I am involved in the treatment of COVID patients because of those brain strokes these patients have due to the infection. Many of my subscribers wanted me to make a video on this and here is the result. How is the second wave different from the first wave? Number one, second wave is more infectious means a person spreads the virus to more people compared to the first wave. Hence, in this wave, we are seeing the whole family, the whole office becoming positive. Number two, we are seeing more asymptomatic patients, meaning they will be having no illness, but tests pick up the infection. Number three, this wave affects children also. Although the illness in children is very mild, but they can be super spreaders in the community as it's very difficult to maintain masking and physical distancing with kids. What to do if you feel sick? Watch out for headache, loss of smell and shortness of breath. As of now, any fever is considered COVID unless proven otherwise. Isolate immediately soon after the first symptom. Get tested on days 3 to 5 of illness as prior to this period, we have seen test will not pick up the virus. After the test, isolate yourself till your report comes. Now what test? Throat swab RT-PCR. This is the gold standard. Nowadays, report may take 2-3 days because of the rush. There is a new rapid RT-PCR lamp test that is loop mediated isothermal amplification test available in some hospitals which takes under 10 minutes to report. This is also a very sensitive test but it's little expensive and is reserved for our emergency cases where I need to take up these patients for emergency brain surgeries. This season, we have seen many patients first testing RT-PCR negative and after a few days becoming RT-PCR positive. In such highly suspect cases, I do a HRCT scan of the thorax which will pick up those lung patches due to COVID. I find this test very reliable in some cases. So leave the choice of these tests to your doctor. Now what to do if you are tested positive? First thing to do is to stay calm. Report yourself to the authorities and they will tell you what to do. All you need to procure is a good quality pulse oximeter which measures oxygen in your blood and it is the most important factor in this disease. Also make sure you have enough of paracetamol tablets of 500 or 600 mg strength depending upon your weight. And lastly a good thermometer to record your temperature. Pulse oximeter records your oxygen levels in a number format like 95, 96 or 97 etc. Also some oximeters measure your pulse rate in smaller fonts usually 60 to 100 or more if you have fever. So big fonted number is your oxygen saturation and small fonted number is your heart rate. Don't get confused. Normal oxygen saturation should be above 95 on room A. Anything below 94 should be taken note of and less than 90 is serious and you should call your doctor and inform. Always wear mask and isolate yourself in one room. You should be the only person in that room. 
If you do not have a separate room, then you can opt for a COVID care center or a hospital so that you can isolate yourself. Maintain good hand hygiene technique. Now, another question frequently asked is, how long the isolation lasts? Incubation period of this virus is usually 5 to 6 days and maximum 14 days. So, we isolate patients for 10 days from the date of testing positive. But remember, you can still shed dead or live viruses in your breath even after 10 days. So, 14 days from the onset of symptom is very very safe. So, maintain masking and other hygiene during this period. If you develop fever, you should see that you are fever free for 3 days before mixing with the community. We categorize patients into mild, moderate and severe. 99% of COVID patients are in mild category. There is fever here and other symptoms but there is no shortness of breath. Breath rate of around 12 to 16 per minute is normal. Oxygen should be 94 and above. There is no need for hospitalization. Then there is no need for plasma, remdesivir, ivermectin, hydrochloroquine, antibiotics or even steroids. Take paracetamol tablets 3-4 times a day and bring down your fever. You can take some vitamin tablets. Please contact your doctor for the same. Take your illness severe if you get very high temperature in spite of taking paracetamol tablets and you get breathless with oxygen of less than 94. Call your doctor and get a bed in the hospital. Friends, there is a warning for high risk category patients. That is people who are more than 60, people with heart disease, diabetes, cancer, chronic lung, kidney or liver disease or previous patients with stroke and obese patients. Keep a close watch on these people, especially during night. Now let's go to moderate cases. Here, breathing rate is more than 24 per minute. There will be shortness of breath. Oxygen saturation of 90 to 93. You need admission into a ward bed in a hospital. Further treatment will be as per the COVID protocol. Severe cases is seen in about 1% who are unlucky and this category of patients are very sick from the illness. All our medical resources be it be hospital beds, oxygen, ventilator, remdesivir need to be saved for this category of patients who are less than 1% and not the other 99% with mild illness irrespective of other factors. Here, the breath rate is more than 30 and they are really, really breathless. Oxygen will be less than 90. Immediate admission to an ICU and further treatment is mandatory as per COVID protocol. Friends, I get a lot of phone calls these days to arrange Remdesivir and Tocilizumab injections from my friends. For the 1% that have severe illness, the only medications that have been found to have significant benefit are steroids and blood thinner tablets. Tocilizumab has also been found to have some benefit and should be given whenever available. Remdesivir on the other hand has very minimal benefit and should be given if available. I want to stress here that these injections are not drugs of choice for COVID and should be used judiciously by we doctors at specific time of your illness. So leave this decision to us and never force the doctors to start these medications. These are serious medications friends and have very serious side effects and sometimes they are fatal. So take home message friends, 99% of you will not have to visit a hospital and can isolate and treat yourself at home. Three things should be handy, pulse oximeter, thermometer and paracetamol tablets. Red flag is the number on your oximeter of 93 and below. Anything above 94 you need not have to worry. Don't listen to rumors and be in touch with your doctors. I hope you liked the video and let me know in the comment section what else you wanted to know of this second wave. Please keep it in mind, today's date is April 27, 2021 and guidelines may change as the infection and protocols evolve. Keep watching Doc Logs 
for more updates on this. Don't miss my video on COVID vaccines in doc logs. Please share this video in your social media circles so that the society at large is benefited. Friends, be safe, wear well-fitting masks all the time, practice hand hygiene and maintain social distancing. Together, we can fight this virus. I'll be back with another equally interesting doc log very soon. Till then friends, feel awesome, live awesome and take good care of your health.